That's right. Thank you, uh, last caller and uh, Minister. I suppose the, the need for me putting down this uh, topic question uh, arose following weeks of uh, worry and disquiet amongst workers, amongst users, families that have uh, ch children or uh, grown up children now with disabilities, and they were very worried coming up to the. Uh, and the phone was hopping going back the last number of weeks and it culminated with a deputation coming in to me led by uh, Donny Doody and, and, and several others on Saturday uh, to my clinic in Scots. And I put on this, uh, the, now I'm glad that, uh, that the matter seems to be uh, resolved. I have raised it back over the years several times inside in this chamber. I'm glad it appears to be resolved, and what we hear is that 3% will be paid from last April, and 2% in November, and 3% in, 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 in mid-April, uh, or next April. So, but my understanding is that there's still 1.5% uh, before actual pay parity with HSE workers and, uh, and, and other public sector workers is arrived at. So I, I'm asking that that happens and that there be on complete parity and that when, when HSE or public sector workers get a raise in the future, that these people will get it as well. And I, I mean, they, they took a pay cut back in 2018, which is uh, 50, 15 years ago, and it's an awful long time to leave them with, without uh, proper pay and, and pay parity. Um, uh, the strike would have left thousands of people with, uh, without assistance or access to the day centre, leaving many potentially trapped at home and some unable to even get out of bed without help. And in Kerry, we have so many uh, of these service providers like Cheshire Ireland, Vincent de Paul, Enable Ireland, Family Resource Centres, Irish Wheelchair Association, and Kerry Parents and Friends. All these are uh, highly trained uh, individuals and workers who were able to deal with the problems and the, uh, we'll say the expansive uh, range of disabilities that people, users had, and no one else could do their work. And it was an awful, uh, I, I, it was very hurtful, and many people were very angry uh, that it went to the brink uh, so late last night. We do thank you for working back over the recent days, both the department and the, 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 the people on the worker side, uh, side uh, for working into the night and ensuring that the strike is called off. We're, we're all very grateful for that. But I'm appealing to you, Minister, that whatever difference is left remaining, and there is a difference of one and a half percent, I'm told, that that uh, one and a half percent is, is, is dealt with, and that the, the, the workers in, in, in Section 39 workers, uh, that they will get uh, complete pay parity and that they will have it in the future. And um, the stress imposed on families across the country cannot be, rever uh, cannot be reversed. This treatment by the government uh, was, was uh, not desi desirable, and I'm very hot about that, as many people out there are. Um, I, 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 my time is up. Um, thank you, Alaska Herlock. And I want to thank um, the Deputy for raising this matter this evening, which Government has been working intensely to resolve over the past number of weeks and months, and the sustainability and stability of the health and social care sectors and the impact of industrial action on essential services is a concern for Government. I am particularly aware that the staff recruitment and retention challenges have been affecting the sustainability and stability of the Section 39 and the 56 organisations and their ability to deliver services on behalf of the state. Following intensive talks under the auspice of the workplace relations, parties process including the Department of Children Equality, Disability, Integration Youth and the Department of Health reach a pay agreement with the unions. And sometimes this is wrong to name people 
but we had officials there and they, were, they played a phenomenal role on it. Colm, James, David, Anthony and Gary representing uh, pay, reach a pay agreement with the, the unions representing the Section 39s, the 56 and the Section 10 organisations. And I want to thank the representative bodies from the unions for they doing their role in, in achieving um, the outcome that was achieved early this morning. The agreement which the unions have indicated will be put to their members and the pro proposed is an 8% increase over three phases. Uh, an increase of 3% backdated to April, as you have quite rightly said, an 2% then on the 1st of November, just coming, and an increase then of the 3% from March 2024. In addition, agreement was reached to commence a process to facilitate discussions on appropriate further funding models. Uh, further funding increases have been regarding to building momentum and any successor public sector pay. That was the hardest piece of it all agreed, to be quite honest with you. It was to ensure that we don't find ourselves again with the gap ever widening. We have to have a parallel process. Uh, and to be very fair to the unions and the departmental officials, they have worked out and, and laboured on the language that they can put to the members now in relation to that parallel process to ensure that a pay gap doesn't happen again. OK, that, that's a very important piece. So most importantly, and in the immediate term, this agreement has resulted in the postponed and planned industrial action of the staff today. The government is committed to the expansion of the services for people with disability. The disability action plan was approved by government in July this year and is currently being prepared for publication. And in addition to the disability action plan, the roadmap for children's services will be launched next week. And this roadmap aims to improve services for children with complex needs and their family. I recognise the role that essential 39 organisations will have in delivering the ambitious targets of the disability action plan and the services for children. And my department has been engaged with the issue with the Department of Health since the transfer of functions. And as we all know, that initial offer in July to increasing funding was not accepted by the trade union representatives. And consequently, unions representing 39s and 56 workers announced that their members in a selection of employer organisations would take indefinite action. So it was crucial that we found a resolution. Absolutely. Um, it was crucial. And, and the last guy here look, was talking there earlier on, and like I was acutely aware that those television programmes taking place, uh, and, and all the while knowing that an agreement had to be found, had to be found. I would like to recognise the hard work of all the parties involved in reaching this agreement, including the officials and the departments. But most importantly, I want to acknowledge the families um, who, who were at anguish, wondering, could it be resolved? But I also want to acknowledge that the staff who were reluctant to actually feel that they were forced to a strike action to get a resolution. So to all I want to thank their patience uh, and bearing with government. Maybe it took too long, um, but I hope that we can bring a desired outcome. But my job in all of this is in 2018, last can curl if I can just say this, in 2018 when, when it was looked to do pay restoration, 50 organisations was picked out of the 300, the top 50, and they left 250 behind. I was determined, along with Minister O'Gorman this time, if we were doing pay restoration, we got it for all and left no organisation behind. Minister, thank you for the reply and thank you for that. Uh, um, but uh, as you said in the reply, recruitment and retention of staff was a problem and yes. has been a problem. I actually raised it here inside a few months ago, uh, I don't know how long ago, but I did raise it a number of times. But I'm still a, a bit worried about the difference that may still remain, because I've been told there's one and a half percent of a difference. That shouldn't be, Minister, or that can't be. There were 5,000 workers going to go out and strike. There was thousands of... of Disabled people and families going to be upset, and 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 like I said, some of them wouldn't have been able to get out of bed today. It shouldn't have gone to the brink like that, and uh, uh, it should not have gone that far, Minister. And uh, I'm glad that, that that you've admitted that, because uh, people are born with disabilities. People become disabled during their lives, and. We, we, as elected representatives inside in this uh, chamber here, 
have to be do, to do all level best for these people uh, and and help these workers because like I said it is highly specialized work trained handed down it takes years before uh, people are on top of their job uh, in certain areas where there's certain tricky and 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 hard things to to, to do to manage these people and uh, who, through no fault of their own, are the way they are. We call them special people. And we, 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 our role, whatever about anything, but we must help disabled people and people who can't fend for themselves. And the one big worry that I know several parents that have uh, these children who are bored across so well all their lives. But as they get older, when they go into their 70s and when they go into their 80s, and maybe one of them is only left in one parent. Mm -hmm. uh, age determines how long we, you, you know, we stay in this set, and uh, no matter what kind of help we're in. And um, they, they, they find themselves in this position, and they're totally dependent. And there should be no difference ever again in the pay uh, between Section 39 and Section 38. These are wonder they're all wonderful people, but they must be treated all the same as far as pay is, is concerned. Thank you. And th Minister, to conclude. Thank you. I, I have consistently um, stated that the government's commitment to the sustainability and stability of the health and social care sectors, recognising the ability of the voluntary organisation to pay their staff, is highly dependent on the state funding. That's critical. I have totally recognised it. I have advocated along with everybody else here in the House for that. We had to engage in a process, Deputy, as you totally understand. Maybe the process was a bit late starting. Maybe the process took a little bit too long. But we got there in the end. And I want to thank the role that Minister O'Gorman, Minister Donnelly and Minister Donoghue played in allowing us to actually bring out an envelope to engage in that process. But in the doing that with the support of the three party leaders, they also ensured that we spoke to the point when building momentum in addition to the agreement was reached to commence a process to consider appropriate further funding increases having regard for the building momentum and any successor public pay agreement. That is the kernel piece of it, that we prevent any further expansion of gaps that we keep them aligned so as that there is equal pay for equal work because all are doing the work of caring for persons with disability in the voluntaries, the 38s, the 39s and the HSC. I see their work as equal. And I said it last week here on the floor of the Dáil, equity to me would be equity for the workers as well as equity for the service users. Good morning. Good morning.